Welcome to another episode of Cutting Edge Health. Today we're talking about, could it be a nerve? Specifically, could it be a clunial nerve? And for those of you who don't know what a clunial nerve is or know how it's going to affect you, we're going to tell you exactly what it is so you can be able to address it, feel better, and get back to leading your life. So let's kind of get into the nitty gritty of it right from the jump. So first of all, when most people think about back pain, they think about back pain being pretty common and common causes. So they think about the following. They think about it maybe being a muscle sprain, possibly something called sciatica. Maybe there's disc bulging that takes place. Perhaps there's some osteoarthritis that's present there. Maybe there's some stress fractures or things along those lines. But that's not what we're talking about when we talk about a clunial nerve. We're going to give you an idea about where it is, how you experience it, and what you can do about it. So let's kind of show you exactly what that means. So if we're to look, what we can be able to see as we take a look at kind of this aspect of the spine is that there's the area of the sacrum that's present. There's vertebral bodies that are present in the lumbar region. Here, obviously, showing quite a bit of scol scoliosis. And you have this area that's present right in here. So this area that's present right in here, that's near the gluteal region, it has nerves. And we're going to talk about that in depth and detail. But those nerves actually can become entrapped and they can cause pain. So is there a reference that you can be able to look up to find out about this? As you guys know, we always do that. We give you something that you can be able to refer to other than this video. So you can have a discussion with your healthcare providers, be they nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, or other physicians, whether they're traditional MDs or chiropractors or naturopathic docs. We want you to be able to understand how to be able to evaluate the literature separately with those people that you trust and that you know. So in doing so, and obviously, you know, in doing this, we want to make sure that you understand we are so excited to be able to bring this to you. So accordingly, what we want to be able to make sure that you are in terms of it being excited is informed. And so the literature that we're using for this is the following. It's from Pain Physician, published actually in this year, 2022, that looked at the superior metal clunial nerve entrapment, a cause of low back pain and radicular pain. So with this, we're going to kind of get into those areas. Again, for those referencing uh, this at a later date, that journal article can be looked up under PubMed, which you just go to Google and then go to PubMed. And it's a free article, so you can be able to find it. You don't have to have any type of license in order to be able to kind of take a look and evaluate it. So one of the things it does is it shows where the anatomy is, then it explains the differential diagnosis of back pain, and then goes from there. So we're going to follow kind of along with that article. For those of you who are joining us uh, over the last few seconds, we are talking about clunial nerve entrapment. And in essence, it is it potentially a nerve? As you can see in this initial picture, you can see a couple different circles. You can see where the clunial nerve sits. Again, kind of referencing that other uh, quick slide, one of the things that we can see is this is the sacrum lumbar vertebral bodies that are in place. And then over here and on both sides, you're going to see clunial nerve kind of come down. So let's explain that to you so you can get it and get it and get it. Okay. So <clears throat> Um, we take a look, the anatomy looks like this. You can be able to pick out that same type of reference that was referred to earlier if we're kind of changing some things around so you can kind of see this in concert. It look of the following oak. Let's see. We take this off for a quick. You can see that it sits similar to this very picture that looks like this. So when you take away and you strip away all of the areas of the muscles and stuff, such, you can see where the clunial nerves sit. And where the clunial nerves sit are going to be within the areas that sit right along the aspect of this ridge. So what you'll feel traditionally is you'll feel the following. You'll feel these nerves that kind of are in and around the areas of that ridge where you would think you'd hold kind of the waist pant, waist of your pants. So that way you can be able to kind of um, know as close to where your glutes are, your buttocks, that area that gives you challenges and problems, right? So when we talk about that, many people are like, oh yeah, I definitely got back pain, but is all back pain the same? And clearly it's not. There's a number of different references that we see within common literature that's like, oh, this back pain is just kicking my butt and taking my names from everything from King of Queens, where you can see, you know, just trying to lower down and you got this back pain or soreness to cartoons where you just know everything kind of hurts to just traditional kind of like commercials 
to even now some of the Marvels and where you see like Spider-Man or even Thor, who's common right now, all having back pain that's present, right? And normally you talk about having traditional type treatments, things like massage or other types of injections, but basically kind of how can you be able to feel better with those improvements? But a colonial nerve problem is different because the nerve is different and where you feel it is different. It's not the same as sciatica. Referencing that one uh, model again, when you normally think about sciatica or lumbar problems, that nerve comes down and in and around the areas down in here, okay? Versus you having the nerves that are present higher up, right? So when we go back to that picture that was shown before, what we're able to see is this. This upper portion is where the superior clunial nerves are. And then lower down, you can see the medial clunial nerves that exist that can cause a whole host of different problems and issues and feels, right? So if we were to take this and we were to chop and kind of cut across uh, cross-section wise, we can see that the clunial nerves um, are a part of where the nerve root comes out to, and it comes in this posterior element going towards the buttocks. For those of you who are joining this live, shoot us a question if you got questions about the anatomy or other things. As we take a look at this picture, it goes a little bit higher up. It shows not just the area of the iliac crest, but it also shows the thoracic region and how those areas kind of come out into the areas of the muscle that can result in pain. So let's take another picture, an anatomical um, representation, and really kind of break it down. So if we were to take a look, this is probably one of the most clearest written pictures. You can see it in comparison to what we have. You can see the sacrum that's off to the left-hand side. You can see the muscle that sits to the ears of the glute. You can see the iliac crest that sits here. And you can see these black, dark lines, which are representative of the clunial nerves that give pain, that come from this area from a multiple different spots and end up resulting in pain that's present, mainly staying in the back without much radiation down the legs. So as you can see, obviously that's present on both sides. It goes into the area where the bones are and the muscle and things along those lines. So hopefully you guys have a pretty good handle on it. You understand it well, and you can really be able to explain it to people and get it, right? Okay, so let's go back through this one more time so that you guys are following along with me and we really understand what the clinical nerve, where the location is. So if you were to kind of take a look at this reference, and this is looking at the low back, right? What you can see is you can see the sacrum that's present right here, right? You can see the iliac crests that are present in here on each side. And then the clunial nerves exist within this area present here or within this area present here, right? That's what we're looking at. So this way, I'm pretty sure you guys got it, that you understand it, there's no problems, and that you are following along with me now, right? Hopefully. All right. Hopefully you got it and that you, you understand it and you're, you're good with me like this. Okay. All right. Let's see. Are there any questions? Okay. So one of the questions that pops up is the following, is how can you tell if it's a nerve or something else? Very great question. Thank you so much, uh, Audrey. Really appreciate it. So let's kind of segue into it, which is really kind of useful because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So um, let's talk about the common causes of back pain and what you can potentially experience, right? So some of the common causes of back pain are the following. We're going to run through maybe four slides like this. One is that it could be a vertebral fracture. Normally when that's the case, it's pain in the area. It's aggravated with palpation, which means pushing on the area. So if you were to take, and you take a look at that model again, and you were to take a look here, you could see like these various different spinous processes and you were to press on it. That's how you know that there are, is a portion of vertebral body problems, right? Lumbar disc disease or spinal stenosis. Traditionally, you have some changes that might be placed present that is dermatomal in distribution. If it's facet, you can get pain relief with doing something that's called a diagnostic medial branch, which we talk about in various different uh, videos. And you should check those out on our YouTube channel. If you were to take a look at the thoracolumbar junction, you can have pain in T12 or L1. 
And if you were to take a look, you can also be able to assess, is it SI joint problems where you have low back pain, but you can see some things on exam. So a Faber test, a Gaislian test, pelvic compression, or iliolumbar signal where you have, syndrome rather, where you have pain that's produced by the hip flexion and Faber. Okay, so let me kind of give you an idea about what the heck are we talking about when we say that, right? So what we're talking about when we say that is the following. So if you're looking at the areas that would be indicative of, for instance, a disc problem or a facet problem, it looks like the following. <clears throat> so if you were to take a look, this area that's going to be in here is going to be a facet, right? It's those areas that are bendable, that are movable, that twist and turn. It's a problem when you first get up in the morning. It's a problem with cold weather. It's a problem with storms. Those type of things are going to be responsive traditionally to a diagnostic medial branch that we talked about. The vertebral compression fractures are going to be responsive to you pressing on the bone here. And that's how you can tell that it's that, right? When you talk about Faber test or you talk about things like the SI joint, it's going to be indicative of if you do different tests where you have the leg outgoing or the hip coming up. And so those are things that can be able to allow you to figure out are these other things potentially into play. We take a look at, is it an issue with the muscle, like a paraspinal myofasciitis, is you can see is there trigger points and they get better when you give medication into the muscle, which we've also talked about. Is it a gluteus medius or compartment syndrome? By focusing on the medius muscle, you can be able to identify it traditionally using ultrasound and be able to try and treat it by giving trigger point injections. Is it piriformis? which we've also talked in various uh, different YouTube videos, one of which I would say is the following. If you haven't taken a look at pain when sitting, it can give you more explanations about that. Please check it out. But be that as it may, all these different things can, be a, 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 can play a role in terms of simulating back pain. And then finally, we come to a clunial nerve. So it's the pain in that same area at the ischium when typically with sitting, relieved by local anesthetics to the site. So can you figure out, is the clunial nerve a problem with exam and imaging alone? Well, actually, it's pretty darn difficult to do. So if you palpate that area, meaning you press on it, you can feel it. If you have bending to the opposite side, it sometimes can cause some challenges and issues and feel like pain. If you give local anesthetic, it can sometimes make it feel better. Ultrasound, you can see the nerves, but you can't necessarily see any pathology per se. X-ray, you really can't see hardly anything with a clunial nerve, which is one of the reasons why typically there needs to be some other imaging that's brought into play to kind of figure out some things. MRI is nonspecific. And for the most part, you can't be able to diagnose clinical nerves for it via it or via CT scan. And EMGs and nerve conduction studies also don't give benefit. So really, at the end of the day, your clinician, the doctor that you're working with, has to know that this is a potential issue. Otherwise, they may very well miss this nerve problem, which is different than a disc and nerve problem like sciatica. So what are some of the treatment options for it? What could you potentially do? Well, there's a number of different things that you could potentially do. They include the following, being able to go right down using x-ray, find the fluoroscopic assessment of where the iliac crest is, and give an injection traditionally of local anesthetic, but you can do some other things in order to be able to make some things feel better. We're going to talk about that. In addition, you can be able to deal with the lateral border of S2, which if you had not noticed is actually where one of the areas of the nerve from the middle clunial nerve arises from. You can give medicine at that site and see if you can be able to improve things. Traditionally, it's local anesthetic uh, that can see if it can temporize it. And then from there, you can make a determination. Do you do heat uh, using like a radio frequency? Could you consider an orthobiological like a platelet lysate to try to be able to improve it? There's a number of things that you can do. We take a look from an ultrasound picture. It shows us even better where you can be able to see the areas of the sacrum, the foramen, and potentially the nerve and how a needle can be directed towards that area to try to improve the problem using ultrasound as a diagnostic and therapeutic modality by letting injections be delivered in an accurate way. In addition, you can do cryoablation, which we've also talked about in our aloe vera video to be able to explain how to be able to go after the nerve in a safe fashion. Um, and then you also can be able to do peripheral nerve stimulation. 
And we've talked about peripheral nerve stimulation ad nauseum. We're one of the few channels that really kind of gets into peripheral nerve stimulation so that you have an idea about what's going on. But if you haven't seen some of our videos dealing with peripheral nerve stem, they include the following disruptive tech and looking at stem wave, and then also looking at peripheral nerve stimulation and that really the critics are wrong. So we have a whole host of different videos that really can add as a complementary piece in order to be able to get that addressed. I think there's a few questions that have come in since the last one, and that is, what's the treatment for that, which we kind of covered, is that you can do a number of different things from doing local anesthetic at the site to going after the muscle itself to try to see if you can be able to improve what you feel to doing neuromodulation peripherally using a NALU stem wave or potentially stem router type treatment option to you being able to do cryo or potential thermal radio frequency. All right, hopefully that answers your question. And let's see, is it something that affects one side specifically or is it something that affects a whole area? Good question. Um, so th the thing is, you don't necessarily have to have a clunial nerve problem on both sides. You can have a clunial nerve problem on both one or obviously none. It really just kind of depends on where the entrapment sort of takes place in order to then cause you problems and issues. So this video has been all about clunial nerve pathology, understanding where it's located in the body, how it, how it feels by it being localized to the back with very little radiation, and what you can do about it, a number of different modalities and treatment. If this video was of value and you really are interested in videos that are like this, that give value, that help explain pain conditions that you may not have even heard of, or give you insight in terms of how to be able to treat physical suffering or mental suffering, then we're, we're your place, we're your tribe. It's this channel that deals with cutting edge health of different sorts that can be able to help you. I would advise you if you're open to learning more to be able to sign up, hit the subscribe button, hit a like button, and we'd greatly appreciate you being able to help us help other people, help them figure out how to be able to punch pain in the face, whether it's physical or mental, and get back to leading the life that you deserve. Thank you so much for those of you who join us and thank, thank you to those who are watching this at a later date. Really appreciate you. Have a great day.